In today's show, we're going to talk about Flow and Power Apps PowerShell. Yep, we're going to take two of my favorite topics, right? The Power Platform and PowerShell, and we're going to bring them into one video. And the idea here with this one's going to be get it installed for you and show you a couple of key things to kind of get you moving down that road. And then after that, we'll build upon it with different specific solutions. And don't worry if you're thinking, oh no, PowerShell's not for me. I promise, just like you learn Power Apps, you can learn PowerShell. But before we do any of that, first, here's our intro. Hi, my name is Shane Young with Power Apps 911. Those guys. In today's show, we're going to talk about Flow and Power Apps and how we use PowerShell to manage those. And don't worry, this isn't just for administrators. Even end users can use it. So if you're like, oh, IT locked me out, it's okay. We'll talk about that. And also, if you're just totally uncomfortable with PowerShell, that's okay too, because I will point you to a different series that I did years ago on how to get started with PowerShell. Because one of the things you're going to find is that these are some skills that you need. You know, it comes up with things like, hey, you want to change the owner of all the apps. You want to see who has access. You want to give access to more people. Or maybe you want to get rid of those little prompts that says, you know, do you want to let this app use SharePoint, right? You want to set hero content. All of those fun things you can do with PowerShell. Or another one, how about you're struggling with delegation? There's a PowerShell script out there to create 25,000 items in your SharePoint list. Woohoo! So then that way you can test delegation with a large list. Real easy, right? PowerShell is just a good core skill, just like the Power Platform is. So I really want you guys to embrace it. And in future videos, I'm gonna get into more specifics of how to do these specific things. But what we gotta do now is lay the foundation and A, get it installed, right? We gotta get PowerShell uh, installed on your machine. And then B, I'm gonna show you some core things like how to figure out what apps you're looking at, how usernames and things are. Because there's lots of GUIDs, really long strings. And so I'm gonna help you kind of figure out how to bridge the gaps there. And then just kind of make sure that you're on that platform so then boom you can start playing and learning and then when i make those future videos we don't have to cover things like how to install the modules fair fair all right so let's just jump over to my desktop and let's go have some fun with powershell okay so the first thing you need to do is you need to launch powershell now just so we kind of level set i'm on windows 10 and on my windows 10 machine powershell is already built in if you're on an earlier version of Windows, uh, it is possible to install the latest version of PowerShell, but basically you're looking for a PowerShell version, you know, five point something, and that is how, what you're going to run. And so what I did was I went down to my start button here, right here, and I said start, I typed in PowerShell, it showed up here in the top under best matches, I right clicked on that, and I said run as administrator. And it's important, that, or it's easier to do this if you run as administrator, but if you don't want to run as administrator or you can't run as administrator, then I'll show you a different set of instructions on how to do the same things. It's just a little bit different if you're not as an administrator. So best case scenario, you're gonna run this as administrator. So I did all of that. And once I pressed all these buttons, then I got this lovely little uh, login box here. And one of the things you can see here, just so you can see it right there, you can see my PowerShell versions 5.1, blah, 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 blah. So get host, select objects, how you did that. So we'll clear my screen off. Okay. So now that we're at a PowerShell prompt, before we start running PowerShell, let's switch over to the browser for a second. And so the Microsoft official documentation is what I want to kind of get you pointed at. So I'm going to show it to you. We're going to walk through it together a little bit. But what I wanted you to be able to do is A, reference this in case things change later, because sometimes these videos last longer than uh, stuff like this changes. But the way they did it, I don't think it will. So I want you to know this was out here. And then B, I want to give you some context around how they did things and how you might do things better along the way. So just a couple of little nuggets. So we're not going to read any of this. I will mention that if you are in um, GCC High or GCC or the DoD uh, versions, it looks like PowerShell does not work for you today, right? Remember, it's March of 2020, 2020, yeah, it's been a long time apparently. Anyway, um, so maybe that's changed, but as of uh, this writing, it is not there. Okay, so then here they talk to you about the run as administrator like I just showed you. Now here's the first set of commands that you really care about. We're gonna install the module. So I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna switch back to my PowerShell. And so over here in PowerShell, before you run that though, what I want you guys to do is I want you to type in get execution policy. And so this is what tells PowerShell whether or not it's allowed to run on older version or run remotely signed code, right? So this is saying can PowerShell only do things that, you know, I created on this machine or specifically signed ones in the case of this or just let it run any. The reason I point this out is because about half the machines I see, their default is actually um, restricted, right? So if you do set execution policy, 
and then execution policy. And if I, there is restricted. And so a lot of people, this is what you'll see. So you'll do get execution policy and it says restricted. If that's the case, then you probably should check with an adult. <laughs> if you check with the adult, typically uh, what I recommend, the most of the world recommends, and basically to do anything productive with PowerShell, you're gonna wanna do remote signed. So we'll say why. And so then that'll set mine to remote sign. If you don't, if you don't have at least remote sign permissions, then it's not going to let you run the PowerShell commandlet. So that was the first little nugget. CLS to clear my screen. Okay, so with that sorted, I'm going to just right click and that is going to paste. If right clicking is not pasting for you, then you can go up here and click right here and say properties and just make sure you have quick edit mode on. Not having quick edit mode on will drive you bonkers. So get that turned on early and often. All right, so there's that. And then it says, hey, this is coming from an untrusted re repository, the PS gallery. Well, the PS Gallery is kind of that main repository for all the different PowerShell commandments for all the different Microsoft stuff. So typically speaking, I'm just gonna go ahead and say A for, you know what, I trust that repository. And so then now it's going to install all the modules and it's done. And so then now it's done, it says, all right, now do you wanna install module in the other one? So there's actually two sets of uh, modules, which is what brings in the commandlets and commandlets are just the little functions we're gonna run if you're not new to PowerShell. So with that all done, here you can see it's going to install the um, end user version, so Power Apps, PowerShell, and this allow clobber. This just says if there is a conflict in uh, some of the commandlet names, which there is between these two, that it allows this one to overwrite the previous one. So it's not a big deal, but you do need that allow clobber when you run the second one. So we're going to hit enter, and just in a second here, it's going to complain about the gallery also. So we're going to say A for that one. And just like that, we have got our PowerShell commandlets installed on our machine and available. We're not, we're not connected, we can't use them yet, but that got them installed. So we'll CLS our screen again. And so then over here, we'll go back and we'll be like, all right, this is the alternative method. So if you couldn't run PowerShell as an administrator, remember we talked about that right clicking run as administrator, if you can't do that, then you can use these slightly longer steps in order to uh, bring those in. Um, so it talked about that, that, okay. And so then now what they're saying is, hey, before you can connect to Power Apps or Flow via the PowerShell, you need to uh, connect with your account. So if you grab this little snippet, choop, control C, we'll hit Alt Tab. And so then now over here, I can right click and I can say that. When you do this, it is going to prompt you to log into Office 365. So I'm guessing at this point, you all know what my account is. And then what is my password? Hopefully you do not all know this. I barely remember it, so hopefully you guys don't. And then it's gonna finally text me. So hey, on the bright side, if you ever do try to log in as me with my password, it'll text me wherever my phone is, hang on. Okay, so then there's my code, so then we'll hit verify. Fingers crossed, woo, we are in. So that is just going to authenticate you. So that's how it knows when you're running these commandments who you are. And everything that happens with these commandlets happens in the context of you, right? So it's using your account. So these aren't circumventing any security policies. You're not like sneaking in, you're not hacking the environment. It's just using your username and password to do things that you can do through the browser, but it'll let you do it in a more programmatic way. And so then the question becomes, what is it you can do? That's fair. So the easiest way to do this is you're gonna say git command dash module and then you are going to um, type in microsoft.powerapps and we're gonna hit tab, I'm just hitting tab a few times until it says microsoft.powerapps.powershell, right? Because these are the commandlets that any old user can use. So these are the ones you kinda wanna start with. And now as I'm flipping through PowerShell and I'm doing all these things, you're like, whoa, what does that mean? What does that mean? Don't worry, if you really wanna learn PowerShell, and I think you should, I've got a video I'll put a link to, right? And I probably pointed it somewhere on the screen real quick. But I've got about 875,000 views on that video and counting. So I've, I've helped a lot of people in the world actually learn PowerShell. So go watch that one. That's the introduction. There's a part two. And then it goes, there's about 40 different PowerShell videos out there that will help you if you want to become better at PowerShell. So, and if not, then you can just type exactly what I typed and not have to worry about it. All right. So anyway, so this git command, this, this gets the, all the list of all the little functions that we can run out of that module we just installed. And so by doing it this way, this is a way for you to focus and see just what are the commandlets that are available to you here. And as you look, you can be like, oh look, there's a git flow and there's a git power app. 
And there's remove flows. Oh, there's remove power apps. Remove means delete. Be careful, right? You can hurt things, right? If you have the ability to delete the power app over in the GUI, then you can delete power app from right here. So be careful. But this gives you a lot of the pieces to play with. Now, the first one that interested me was get dash power app. Right. So the first thing I want you to do when you see one you like is be like, hey, get help. Get dash power app. Oh, okay. So when you do this, it's going to be like, hey, returns information about one or more of your apps. Sounds pretty cool to me. So now I'm just going to hit the up arrow. Oh, sure, I'm not because, yeah, we can just do the up arrow, hit the left, delete that out, and hit go. And so this is going to go and fetch all the power apps that I have access to. And it's going to give us a whole bunch of information about them. And so you can see, like, oh, well, this is interesting. So there's the uh, customer notes app. And you can see the environment it's in. Interesting. So lots of little fun stuff here. Now, if you're like, whoa, that's a lot, because there is, there's probably 100 in here. Then what you might be more interested in doing, so instead of get power app, if you jump over here to your power apps, let's go into my apps, and let's click on my timesheet app. Oh, not like that, though. I did that even in the practice round. Boo. Click on this little guy and say details here. And so right here you can see that the app ID is here. The reason I want you to understand this is because this app ID is going to save you. So hit Control C. We'll then click back over to Power Apps and we'll say Get Power Apps. And then where it says App Name, right? App Name, you're thinking is Timesheet. No, App Name, this is one of the nuances, is that good. But then now there is all the details. And the thing about PowerShell you'll learn is that that returned the whole object. It didn't just return that text. It actually has the whole app right there. So you could do things to that app. So we're not going to get into the specifics of that. But what I wanted to help you guys understand was that by coming over here, you can grab you know the, the, the app ID, which they call the app name over here, and help you start to bridge the gap. When, when I had to learn PowerShell back in like 2007, I think, yeah, we were one of the really super early adopters. And the way that I learned it was I'd be like, all right, how do I do this thing in the GUI? Okay, I can do it in the GUI, yay. Then I go to PowerShell. How do I do that same thing in, in um, PowerShell? And that was an easier way for me to kind of start to connect some of the dots. So that's the reason I want to kind of help you guys with this bridge of that's, you want to figure out things about this one, that's what you do. Because that was that gets us that, all right? Well, that's not super interesting, but it's information. I like information. But I think there's another one called Get Power App. And then if we hit, oh, sorry, Power Apps. And I think, oh, oh, Role Assignment. Well, Role means security, right? Or something, it's in that ballpark. So what if we did this, and it says, oh, App Name, I know that. And then I'm going to paste this in and hit enter. Oh, now look, I can see that Shane Young's the owner. Nicola has edit access. Jeff has ex edit access. Fausto has edit access. Jennifer has user access or edit access. And my entire tenant has view access. Oh, and if we went back over here, right, and we went to share, look at that. All of these people are co-owners. They call that can edit over there. And then the view for everyone in my organization, that was that tenant thing we saw, right? So I used the two to bridge and figure out things because that's what you're going to find yourselves doing. I'm not ever going to make a video that explains you every single thing that Power Apps can do in PowerShell or Flow can do. So I wanted to kind of get you guys bridged. The same on the Flow side, right? So if we do get Flow and then Flow name, well, you know it's not going to be the actual name of the Flow probably, right? So if we go back over here to flow, right, my flows, and let's check out this power apps to camera one. So I, I don't even know how to do it. So we're just going to say details again. Seems like a good place to start. Now you don't see a GUID on here. And that was kind of frustrating to me. So what I did though, is I went up here in the URL. And so the best place I found to get this was out of the URL. So right from flows slash to uh, forward slash details. So I'm going to copy out just the GUID. We'll hit alt tab and we'll do this and look at that so there is the information on the flow what, what, what are you going to do with it yet i don't know you'll figure that out later but this is how you get that object so i want to kind of get you guys primed on that all right so that's the first set of it 
But then if you are an administrator and you've got to have some fancy administrator rights, then, uh, and now, and I think if we look at the documentation, I think they got some good documentation on that. So I'll do this. Uh, we need a valid license. Um, so that's all we needed as makers. All right, that's pretty cool. So good docs there. But the admin commandments we're about to look at, you've got to have one of these roles. Ah, global admin, Azure Active Directory global admin, Dynamics 365 server admin. I think there's a mention of environment admins down here. So you've got to have more permissions to do a lot of the stuff. Now, the thing I would tell you is don't be like, eh, I don't have any of access, I can't do it. I've just been trying stuff. Like I logged in as Chewy the other day, who is not a global admin. I am a global admin, Chewy is not. And so I just started poking around to see what Chewy could see. So it wasn't as much as I could see. I actually just had two PowerShell windows open. I was kind of doing the same commands in both places to get a feel for what was going on. But keep that in mind, to run these uh, more advanced or these admin ones, we're gonna need more access. So let's go figure out what admins can do. So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna do my same thing and get command dash module. I'll start typing in Microsoft. There it is at the top like it should be. Boom, ooh, a lot more stuff. And so here you can see that we have things like um, stuff around connectors. That's pretty cool. Uh, Power apps, APIs to bypass consent. So if you don't want people to have to give consent when they open your app the first time to use SharePoint or use Outlook, you can turn that off with this. That's pretty fun. Get your admin flows, do some DLP stuff, fun. Some CDS database work, all right. Connectors, licensing, fun, fun, fun. Here's one I really like, get users or group from graph. We'll copy that one. So I just right clicked on it to copy that. And so we'll, we'll talk about that one in just a second. You can um, recover an admin power app environment. Oh, I've never, I've never done like 90% of these, but they're here. And, and just like with the power apps or the flow, we plant the seeds. So we have ideas of what we might be able to do here. So there those are. All right, so then let's look at one of those, right? So for example, what was the one I just did? Get user or group from graph. So one of the things that you're gonna find pretty quickly is that you need to know not user names, but their user's ID. So what I figured out was you can do a search string and I'm, what I'm doing here, sorry, I'm going too fast. I'm hitting a, a, a dash, I'm hitting the tab key to go through the options. So there's search string and I'm gonna put in here, Chewy. And so look at this, just like this, it's like, hey, yeah, there's Chewy's object ID. So now I know Chewy's uh, object ID because when I go to grant him permissions, right, I think there is set admin power app role assignment. So if I needed to set Chewy as a um, user of this app, I need his object ID, not his name, not his, not his email address. And so that is why I wanna make sure you guys understood that this is a pretty cool little commandlet. Now you will notice down here at the bottom, when you do that, it kicks out a red error. I can't explain why. The good news is it always works. It just gives an error at the end. So we'll take that, right? These are still in preview, so they don't have to be perfect. That would be Microsoft's response. So anyway, so that's a pretty cool one. Um, someone on Twitter already asked me, I go, hey, can you write PowerShell to give everyone in my company access to all of our apps? I'm like, I don't know, never tried. And I, I spent, yeah, 30 minutes kind of poking around, but yeah, yeah, I figured it out. We'll make that a later video, right? I don't want to go down that rabbit hole now, but there's just a lot of that type of cool administrative stuff, right? It's either bulk management. Um, another one of my customers asked um, their main app builder was leaving, and so they wanted to take all the apps from her and then reassign them to someone else. They want to change the owner of all the apps, and they didn't want to do it one by one. They didn't want to open support tickets. So I wrote PowerShell that basically said, go find all the apps where... Um, she was the owner and it listed out all the apps and then I passed that over to and then set all the owner to be this new person and I just I, I wrote like it was like 30 characters by the time it was all said and done it might have taken me an hour to figure it out but when it's all said and done it's just a short little snippet so we'll talk about that in a future video as well there's just so much cool stuff you guys can do here so that's why I wanted to make sure that you got this installed you understood it if you're digging the idea of PowerShell Make sure that um, you know you go and watch those videos to start learning. And it's not just this PowerShell. There's a lot of different um, PowerShell commandlets out there for all the different things. So how many of you are managing SharePoint Online or Teams or Exchange? They all have commandlets. As a bonus, one of the things I'll share with you right here, so let's just do this, we'll open another tab. So my buddy Todd, he has a great little blog post here. I'll put a link down in the, um, the description. 
But so he has all the official Microsoft modules and where they're at, right? So even our Power Apps and Flow stuff, this is where I, I went and, you know, found all the pieces. So all of this stuff is available out here. So Todd had a nice thing. I want to make sure you understood that. Check out the PNP PowerShell. That's part of the, um, the, the SharePoint Online stuff. Really important there. Um, also, let's just go back over here real quick. And one of the things I wanted to also point out that I did not like in their doc, the Microsoft official documentation, like, hey, if you don't ever want to type in your password again, here's how you save it in plain text. Do not do this. It is a terrible idea. So on the screen, I'll put another link, I don't know, over there somewhere. Um, I've got a video that shows you a secure way to put the, save these links or save the password, right? Please do not put your password in a script like that, plain text. That is, that is the antithesis of secure and we just, we just can't do that. So, okay. I don't know. That it seems like a lot, but there's a lot going on here. I just want to kind of get it out there for you guys, get you started with this. If you've got feedback questions, leave me comments below. And remember, I'm going to go and make now several different videos that expand upon this, but this will be the one I point everyone back to. Like, how do I get started with this? It's this video. All those videos, we're just going to jump right into solving problems. So, all right. I guess with that, I'm just going to say thanks and have a great day. Before you go, be sure to click on the subscribe button over here so that way you'll be notified when new videos come out. If you need any help or you want to work together, whether your problem is big or small, check us out at Power Apps 911. We do it all. I rhymed. Or if you're looking for more formal training offerings, we have those linked up here somewhere. So check them out. Thanks and have a great day.